Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we're going to be harnessing the power of industrial robots to make ourselves some flight simulator panels. I hope you enjoy. I start in Fusion 360 and then I pull this design out and put it into a drawing. The drawing is basically a one-to-one -one scale and I deselect everything but the panel I need. I also make sure to hide the title block right here and the sheet size, like numbers. You can change the sheet size to fit the panel and I usually select the biggest one. You can export it as a PDF and then the laser engraver software actually reads it, which is quite cool. Now we just take the flash drive, open the file up and print it as if you would to a normal printer. Kind of a cool process. And then it loads up into the software from the 80s. Yeah. We have to scale it up because it just puts it in a random scale. I don't know why that is. You scale it up and basically I match the dimension over here to a dimension over here. And that basically makes everything lined up and ready to go. Now we can move the laser. So you jog it with the arrow keys. You want to make sure this probe is on the material. And then this is when it auto focuses. So it goes down until the probe touches it. Then you jog it over to your origin. So this little dot should be about at the edge of your material. I'm going to put it a little left. And that's about good for me. The material is fixed with this tape right here so it doesn't uh, skew or ro rotate on the bed. And now is the fun part. Close the lid. Turn on the laser and the fan. One of the first panels I made was actually on the CNC mill. I probably wouldn't recommend it just because of all of the mess it makes and all of the hassle it is. I'd highly recommend doing the panels on a laser cutter just because it's faster and easier. With the CNC mill, I started out with this first panel with a 1 8 inch bit and it was super cool to see. I actually broke the bit later on so be careful with the CNC milling. Over here it's cutting the circles and these circles in this toolpath worked out pretty well, even without tabs, but in the next toolpath I tried, they actually shot across the room, so I'd highly recommend printing with tabs. This is doing the outline right here, and it's working wonderfully until it doesn't and the bit falls off, and also the material starts coming up. Here's the finished result, and it looked alright, it fit in well with the panel. It's actually really cool to see that this panel fits a real life altimeter, which uh, I thought was pretty cool. You can tell that this section is a lot more precise than this section. If you look over here, these are perfectly milled over here, and it really just follows what it's told to do. 
I'm a little disobedient. I don't really follow the plans perfectly. And you can see that definitely takes a toll on the appearance. This line isn't perfectly machined straight. Uh, along with these, it's all, all up to my interpretation. That's one of the things I really like about this CNC milk panel. It's basically as perfect as I can get. So, what do you think about the two panels? Uh, do you like the CNC milk panels? Do you see any problems with the panels in the future? I'd love to hear all of your feedback, advice, and knowledge in the comments below. The engineering teacher let me use their multi-thousand dollar CNC mill, but don't worry, in return I organized their little drawer, so it's all lean and clean. If you go over to my Cessna 172 I, here, you see this cabin diagram that I apparently disregarded completely. I, I don't know what was going through my face head thing back then, but you will see that there's a bit of gap right here where I made it too skinny. That makes it so that there's not enough space right here to make a support structure and have the panel. Just really quickly, I'm uh, gonna see if I can edit this because it's all parametric. It'll all update every other thing. So I'm gonna see if I can't just make it a little fatter. This won't be scientific, I am warning you. I'm gonna make it like 5% fatter. See if that works, make it another 5% fatter. So we're basically gonna go here, modify scale, sketch scale, point, should we make it this point? And we're just, oh my gosh, no. no. So let's make it 1.05. And I think a 5% difference isn't horrible. So finished that sketch. Where's profile two? We're gonna do the same thing. Just kind of make it 5% fatter. Um, sketch scale, point, 1.05. And this actually works in my favor, how the top and the bottom are constrained. I don't want to move the top and the bottom because it doesn't need to get taller, it just needs to get fatter. Now let's go from the top and see it actually, it aligns. What a beautiful day. This will affect a few things, but it's better to affect it right now than like 62 years down the road. If we go back to everything we've made so far, it will be kind of crap. Since we have our shell, and then we basically made it fatter, uh, this is, this is going to be tricky. There might be complications, but let's save this. Cross our fingers and hope for the best. Moment of truth. It's out of date, and now when it gets back into date... This is... this is tight. It got fatter! Okay, there are some problems, but did you see that? If we go back in time, we can see when it gets unfatter, when we unupdate it, it gets skinny. I didn't see it happen. I was busy, like, getting too excited. But yeah, here it is. It's all skinny. And then, again, we update it, and it gets fatter. So yeah, it gets fatter, but not taller. So uh, this actually worked pretty well in my favor. I have to admit, this right here, we do have a few problems. But this part didn't. This part is intact, so that's good. But now, this is the moment we've actually been waiting for. If we go over and press this button, I'm hoping it'll work. Ready? Steady? Get fatter, please. Uh... It got fatter! Yay! Okay, so <laughs> this is really good. That's a heart. Uh, that's a lifesaver. But uh, if we put it over here... It looks good. There's a lot of clearance here. And if I move a body, <laughs> move the body over here, you can see that as long as I make this a little skinnier maybe, tweak it around a little, it's not really covering up much of the instrument panel. Whereas, if we go back, revert this update, back here, it was covering up like the entire instrument over here. Fattening the simulator really does work magic. And, uh, it's gonna make me do redo a lot of things, but better to redo them now than to redo them in a few months. This video right here shows the altimeter motives process for laser engraving the panels. 
I'm gonna probably end up using their panels because I really like the finish and how they're made and I also love the company. I'd also like to say a thank you to David and Similar, the two Patreons. Uh, if you'd like to support the Cessna 172 project, there's a link in the description below. All of the support helps build up this simulator project and is very appreciated. I hope you all enjoy your Cessna 172 Tuesday, uh, all one of the hours you have left of it, and I will see you in the next video. Have a fantabulous week.